Chafing Armor Podcast, episode 83. There's a hole in the ground in the bottom of the sea. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and lovable Dungeon Master, Michael Corley. And with me tonight is Izzy. Izzy, tell everyone who you will be playing. My name is Marezi McGraw, half-orc barbarian. And today, I will be playing the role of Izzy Corley, 16-year-old. <laughs> Just so. That is exactly how that works. That's not creepy and at also, all. also, <laughs> not creepy at all, uh, says James. And also with us tonight is James. James, oh. tell everyone who you will be playing. Hey, everybody! I am playing uh, Pentance Chalice, a spell scale sorcerer, uh, who's gone through some changes and may change again today. You never know. You you never, never know. And also with us is Dare. Dare, tell everyone who you will be playing. Good evening, everyone. I am Dare, and I am playing Tix Birchmanson, your reliable and steady gnome cleric. Steady as a rock. And we'll get more to uh, rocks in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, and also with us tonight, the exact opposite size-wise, uh, as far as characters, is Lee. Lee, tell everyone who you will be playing. Uh, g'day, everybody. My name is Lee, and I will be playing Usukai Shifter from the Eldine Reaches. Perfect. And last but not least, dun, 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 Riley has joined the party. Uh, Riley, Riley, tell everyone who you will be playing. Hello, I'm Riley, and I'll be playing Athora Greyfield, a uh, tiefling fighter. Fantastic. And it is official now. Uh, she was originally a guest. Uh, Riley has now joined as an official member of Chafing Armor. We were so happy to have her on board. This is going to be a lot of fun. Before we get started into the main story, I want you all to visualize the astral plane. Hmm. As the astral plane drifts in infinity, there are little bits of, of matter Creatures strange and wondrous that cross through it. Even reportedly gods come there to die. And on his plane, the giant corpse that you glimpsed, particularly Penton, glimpsed uh, the corpse of Set shifts out of his plane and into the astral plane and shock waves go throughout that still plane. Also, a tiny portal opens up in the astral plane, it is opening up to a final destination that will lead to death. And the person going through it is Osokai. And we cut back to our adventurers. They have all landed. Their wings are dissipating. They are all coming down. And we see uh, Athora tackling the Kraxador bandit. She tackles the Kraxador bandit. Uh, is there anything that you want to say to this bandit who starved your people and you have been searching for vengeance? All right, so we're going to go back to the village now. You know, the one you stole all our food from and, you know, left us to starve and, you know, killed everyone. Well, the exciting thing is we're going to starve you too in the center of town for everyone to see. Are you excited? Because I am. Oh, and the one known as Oliver Black Eyes scowls at you and mutters under his breath and says something to the effect of, I'll get out of this, you little... Um, and y'all are making your way back to Audrey Three, which you had left at what is effectively one of the fingers of the Simeon Crevasse as you made your way into the center. As you are making your way back to Audrey, a giant shimmering portal opens up and something comes out of that portal a ship a ship comes flying through the portal and sort of crashes into a hill nearby it is a smallish ship smaller than the good ship piss whistle uh it has scrolled an elegant script on the side the lalante and two figures are waving at you from the top. Uh, one of them is a human uh, dressed in rainbow colors. And uh, the other one is a half-elf uh, who is an enthusiastic young woman uh, wearing a, a dress and partial armor. And they are waving to both of you and saying, hello. Well, that was unexpected. I wave back. 
<laughs> it was definitely unexpected. I mean, for y'all, it's getting to be nearly just, you know, well, it's Tuesday. True. Uh, a, a, True. a ship has come out of a portal. Uh, but you see uh, the, these uh, ones looking at you, and they wave to you, and the the, the woman, uh, the human in, in the uh, dress and partial armor, leaps off the edge uh, and lands before you, and not in an aggressive way, but in an enthusiastic way, and she says, Greetings to all of you on the material plane. My name is Bubbles. Bub, hello. What, uh, well, hello. What, what, hello there. What uh, brings you? you? All look... Oh, uh, uh, oh, yes. Sorry. Where are my manners? And she turns back to the uh, the man standing up there. He seems a a little bit shyer, a little bit more quiet. And she calls up to him, and she says, uh, "Renbo, Renbo, um, uh, Renbo boy, uh, do you have our our uh, stowaway?" And he kind of nods uh, slightly, and he pulls out one of the hatches and something comes floating out of the hatch, something that you recognize. It is um, Osokai. Osokai comes out of the hatch and he actually has an ephemeral silver cord attached to him that is wavering back in through the portal. Oh, dear. And hmm. um, Osokai, you don't really remember quite what happened. You were in the battle with the poop monster, and when suddenly a hole got opened up in front of you, you fell down. You had this image of heading towards an incredible weight of darkness, and something inside you told you that hole was taking you to the bottom of the ocean. You were about to come through the bottom of the ocean where both the pressure, the unimaginable pressure would crush you like an egg. And even if that did not, the biting cold would freeze you in seconds. You were on your way to that hole when you were snatched out. But when they brought you to the material plane, you're kind of in your astral form right now. So you are both here and not here simultaneously, it is a very disquieting um, feeling, to say the very least. Doctors, shall we cut the cord? I <laughs> uh, don't even uh, does any, think about does it. Anyone, does anyone want to uh, uh, either arcana check or just say what would happen if you cut the astral cord? Oh, he definitely dies. Yes. When you die in the astral plane, you die in real life. Well, the funny thing is, is if you uh, if your astral form dies on the astral plane, most of the time you are sent safely back to your physical body. However, uh, his physical body is actually in the astral plane. And if he dies here, there's really no telling what would happen. Uh, by the way, Osokai, you are actually floating right now. Uh, you are not solid on the ground. You are just kind of floating in the air uh, like a ghost. Uh, would you like to do anything? Uh, I guess this is just a matter... Uh, it's just a case of mime over matter. Because um, I figure I can't speak either being inside the astral plane. You can try. Get me out of here. <laughs> uh, you, you all hear it's slightly echoey, but you hear his voice clear as day. Says, get me out of here. Uh, now, uh, people, especially Penton and Tix, you have a little more knowledge of this. He looks like what you should look like on the astral plane. So this is kind of reversed. And uh, right. the what, uh, what Rainbow Boy begins to explain to you is that he is passing from one of those portals into another portal. But because time moves incredibly slowly in the astral plane, he is slowly descending down to that second um, portal. And so to the bottom of the ocean? Yes. And so he hasn't gone through the second part. So imagine that the astral plane is, a, is a, just a quick in-between. So he's only falling maybe 10 feet from the original portal to the one that will take him to his incredibly painful death. They're um, showing you a picture is... of, of the Starship Enterprise in in, uh, in warp. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, he is currently in hyperspace right now. Uh, and he is making his way down. But because the astral plane, time moves incredibly slowly. In some parts of the astral plane, time doesn't move at all. Uh, but he is basically in slow motion 
going down to that second black portal that will take him to his death. Oh, so and, technically I should be saying... So, I would love it if you talk that way for the rest of the, the story. Oh, don't, um, don't tempt me. <laughs> please don't tempt him. <laughs> so... Um, it seems that Rainbow Boy is is highly intelligent, very technical, very very mechanically oriented, and what he's explaining to all of you is that they need to find a way to safely cut his silver cord. If they uh, have there there are certain weapons, there are certain items that can cut a silver cord, and if they can do it in the right way, they believe they can actually remove his physical body from the astral plane and bring him uh, here, uh, bring him here physically. But if they don't have one of those things, uh, then they won't be able to. And in what will be in essentially about an hour, your time, he will die. So let's see. Let's start compiling a list of magic items we have. I have that shovel. Well, what's, what's one of the things that would work? Do we know? Well, one of the things that will definitely work, so, uh, and suddenly Rainbow Boy uh, just, uh, his name is pronounced slightly different than that, but it comes across as Rainbow Boy when he talks. Uh, he says, uh, if, if we were able to get a silver sword of the Githyanki, uh, that is actually what they do. They, they are able to cut the silver, silver uh, cords. Uh, so if we could get a silver sword from one of the Githyanki, which uh, Bubbles and I get on pretty well with, but right now there, there's kind of a power struggle going on in the astral plane because some uh, really valuable real estate has opened up and there are several parties that are vying for it. Uh, and it's making things pretty hectic in there right now. Oh, all right. The, so uh, basically the corpse of a god has appeared. Oh. I wonder how that happened. Yes, and uh, so um, there is, uh, and Bubbles uh, cuts in, she goes, well, see, there's the Githyanki, and they want to build their new settlement on the Corpse of the God. That's their favorite place to build. Like you do. And uh, there is also a, an astral dreadnought that is uh -huh. circling around, guarding it, uh, and they are trying to deal with that. And then there are also these things called... Uh, Burbalangs, and they feast upon fear, and so they want to consume the flesh of Set because he has known tremendous pain as a god of death. And so there are all these factions that are basically fighting over the scraps of this giant corpse, and it's a little awkward. Uh, but in the confusion, I think maybe we could get one of their silver swords, and if we could do that, then we could save everybody. We can, I mean, we can save uh, your friend. Uh, so, do we have to go to the astral plane to do that? Well, um, yes. Y well, I mean, you could you could ride on our ship if you want, and uh, uh that's preferable to dying. <laughs> well, but the problem would be though if we go to the astral plane, then we'll be moving at the same speed that Osakai is going, and then he'll just flash into the portal. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. So the the only way we could do that is we could put a we could do an enchantment that will freeze his physical body. Um, there is one problem though: is his astral form. If he dies on the astral plane, um, he will almost certainly die for good. Uh, however, you'll also be physically in the astral plane. So if you die, you'll also die for good. So that you know, it's a problem. I've never died before. <laughs> hey, neither have I. Oh, this uh, guy has. Says, Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> you get better. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is a, a, a shark and a, a wish and a prayer. Um, <laughs> and a pact with a dark and, god. Uh, just a, a quick question. Um, Athora, what would you like to do with Oliver Black Eyes uh, if you do decide to go into the astral plane? Oh, yeah. Him. Uh... <laughs> Kill him now? Get it over with? Why not? I mean... Um, I, I, I don't want to, uh, I certainly don't want to ever put y'all on the rails or God mode. Uh, but just a quick note, y'all actually have a pendant, uh, that you got off a sorcerer or a wizard, uh, who was a drow. 
uh, that was known as feast or famine. And uh, one of the effects of that was actually starvation. Let's do that. So we could quick starve him? Basically. That sounds terrifying. It does. Why have we not been just using this on every enemy? Like, (laughs) hey, buddy, feast or famine. What? (laughs) Plunk. Ah! Uh, it, it, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, I'm not, I, again, I'm not trying to God mojo all as the dungeon master, but just, uh, no, that's a great idea. Thank you, father. You are a valued member of this team and you've given us a it great, great idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, first of all, who do you think is holding on to that? Cause I know certainly, uh, uh it's Pinson not me. Not that's for sure. Uh, so it might be in uh, one of y'all's backpacks. I wouldn't even Sounds if I could. Sounds like a tick, yeah, ticks thing. Uh, yeah, probably ticks. Because uh, uh, certainly, if it's Osokai, that's a problem because his backpack is currently on the uh, astral plane. <laughs> yeah, and ticks is like he's he's a magic guy like Penton, but he's not in a vow of poverty. So I feel like carrying on to our cool stuff is probably his whole deal. Uh, let's say for for the sake of argument, the ticks. You actually had the amulet of feast or famine in your pack. Okay. Um, do you want to give that to Athora to speed up the starving process? Sure. I am generous with okay. our equipment. Okay. Uh, there is. A, it, it basically looks like a, a snake eating its own tail. Is what the pendant oh, looks lovely. like. <laughs> and um, it's it's not a nice looking pendant. You just. Touch it to someone to use it. Mm. So do I have to use like a cloth to grab it and touch it? Uh, no, well, it's it's powered by oh. will, so you just you just have to will it to work. If that's a good question, though. though. Just making sure I don't want to starve. See, I starve, so uh-huh. okay. I go over and will him to starve. Uh, okay. Uh, you touch the amulet to his chest. The amulet actually writhes. And the snake just stops biting its own tail for a moment and sinks its teeth into his chest. And he makes a gurgling sound like, Aah! and you see that his body becomes emaciated as uh, the as he fails his save throw uh, and becomes emaciated. And he is starving and he is almost dead, but not quite dead. Uh, and the amulet is now glowing, and you instinctively know that even without being a, a spellcaster, anyone can now cast a spell uh, to create a, um, shall we say, a hero's feast at a time of your choosing within the next 24 hours. Oh. Uh, Let's hold on to that. However, you should all know that uh, since time is a slight issue, it does take one hour to consume the food. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you want to use it. It's not like a not like a power up in a video game. I mean, lucky we're uh, going. You, lucky they're all going someplace where time doesn't matter. That is absolutely true. Uh, huh. That's another thing to consider. Uh, so that happens. Uh, and by the way, Athora, do you want to just leave him to die, or do you want to end his life? Um. Let's. If I leave him here to die. Okay. Uh, you leave him here. He is starving. He is weak. You have, of course, taken away the the few weapons that he yep. had, and this is the last remaining remnant of the Craxador bandits. Most of them, the rest of them, died trying to get into the Simeon crevasse uh, to where y'all finally ended up. But he was the last and one of the leaders, and now he lay starving on the Pensa Plains. As y'all get on board the good ship. Lalanta. Uh, it is, I knew again, it was going to happen small... at one. <laughs> <laughs> did I? What, did I even come close to saying it right? You did, but it's Lalante. 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 Yes. <laughs> you had the it right the first Lelante. time. And I then did you, say it the right second, the first time. Yeah, I knew. Uh, it. We we we, we okay. talked about this. You did it exactly the same. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's, that, it wouldn't. I wouldn't be the dungeon master I am if I didn't exactly something. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the Lalante. And uh, they, uh, Bubbles uh, gets uh, on, she's kind of the navigator and she starts plotting out a course and uh, Rainbow uh, is kind of working the mechanics in the back and getting the ship up and going and it lifts up into the air. You can tell that it's very unsteady here on the material plane, though it does operate. And they turn it around and say, well, welcome 
to the astral plane. And then vroom, they go through, and all of you experience an, a horrible dysentory, dis, um, disorientation. Disorientation? Right? Thank you. Disorientation. As uh, apparently I experienced one. As you go through <laughs> into the astral plane, there is a sense of weightlessness, and yet there is gravity. Uh, it is very disorienting. There's no horizon. It, it looks a lot like space. You are breathing, but you do not have to breathe. Uh, if you were hungry before, you do not need to eat here. Uh, time passes, but also does not pass. In other words, the astral plane does not obey the normal laws of physics. You, uh, Osokai, you are still in your astral form. So you are floating. You uh, are a physical form in this realm, though. But the big difference is, is that you alone have a silver cord. And in the distance, y'all can actually see his body slowly moving to that second black portal. Uh, both of the portals... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> both of the portals, by the way, are uh, mirrored by silver pools. Silver pools being that they open up into the material plane in different areas. Right. Um, and if you can find something to cut that silver cord before he goes through... You can save him. But even though time passes strangely in the material plane, it, it I'm sorry, in the astral plane, it is passing. And if y'all don't, it, within about an hour, uh, find something, he will die. So, no pressure, though. Uh, uh, so would anyone, uh, is there anything anyone would like to do to assist uh, Rainbow, I'm sorry, Bubbles in navigating? Is there anything anyone can do to help? Well, I... Let's see. Can I use my famously good orc site to do a spot check on the horizon. Actually, someone with a higher wisdom score should do a spot check. See if they can find anything on the horizon. You can absolutely do a spot check. It will be at disadvantage. It means you have to take the lower of two rolls. Plus, there's no horizon. <laughs> uh, well, right. that's why. Because right. <laughs> she's in a, uh, another plane and it is the sky, the, 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 the landscape or lack thereof around us. Yes. Uh, but you're certainly welcome to try. Probably someone who's got the highest wisdom. It's mine zero. It's probably definitely not me. That would be Tix, probably. Okay. Uh, do you want to try to help out uh, Bubbles in navigating? Yes, I will help Bubbles out in navigating. Plus, Tix has a, a very good knowledge of uh, ships and stuff. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> Uh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> She's really real. And she lives in Canada. Yep. Um, plus, wow. uh, it, speaking of uh, not, not girlfriends, but uh, also Osokai does have, uh, I believe, two points in uh, sailing. Yes. Uh, because from of my his... time inhabiting somebody else's body. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's... So gotta rub it in, Osokai. Wow. <laughs> Hey, at least but, she's not uh, from Canada. <laughs> but Tix, I will let you make that roll without uh, a disadvantage because of your various reasons. Okay, here it goes. And that is a natural 17 plus my wisdom. That takes it to 20. Nice. Uh, so you walk up and you look at the charts uh, with Bubbles. Uh, and he, she is, uh, she is obviously a master of this. These two, you don't know their backstory. You have no idea why these two, a human and a half elf, uh, find themselves uh, sailing a, a ship in the astral plane. But, uh, but they seem to be really good-hearted. They seem to have, uh, you know, there, there are just good adventurers out there, and these are two of them. Uh, and you look over the charts, and you kind of point out where she's going, and and some obstacles that you might be able to get around, and. Um, the other thing that you find is that uh, Rainbow Boy is not only powering the ship through mechanics, he is actually psionically powering the ship. There is actually a small, what we would probably think of as Cerebro from the X-Men, uh, helmet that he's wearing. And that is actually how ships are powered in the astral plane is by psionics. Cool. Also, I'm not entirely sure if anybody else has noticed, Osakai has, but the ship's covered in animals. <laughs> is what now? Uh, it... It, Animals. Um, Every kind of animal you can imagine is is present on the ship. Yep. Like Noah's Ark? I like it. Kind yep. of, yeah. Uh, it, it's very strange because there, there's something about the physicality of the ship that, that doesn't obey the normal laws of physics. Is uh, Creatures that seem like they wouldn't fit 
are are just there one moment and then gone the next and uh they they show up and they'll they'll interact with um uh Aphil or Aki and then they'll be gone and uh in which one is has the affinity with uh, animals bubbles bubbles yes uh bubbles is is like giving them small orders and they're like uh, mending uh, things uh, almost uh, Disney princess like, but just very matter of factly. Uh, the animals <laughs> all clearly just adore her. Uh, it seems to be just a thing that happens on this ship. Yes, uh, it, it, you don't know exactly how that works, but it's just some kind of uh, physicality. Um, and uh, I would like you, uh, Osokai, to make a uh, spot check for me. Okie dokie. Oh. I should probably have my character sheet up. It's there. It's just minimized. Uh, spot. I should say I've also been playing 5e, so my mm. brain is... Oh, that's one of my good ones. Okay, that's 26, because that's a natural 20 on the tie. Ah, right off 26. the bat. Good. Um, so you do, in fact, uh, catch the fact that uh, there's all these wondrous creatures just coming in and out, and then there's a moment where a few of the creatures kind of like move out of the way. And you happen to look behind you just as a horrifying creature with leathery bat wings and a huge bulbous head and long spindly fingers is reaching out uh, for you and is trying to grab hold of your leg as you're just kind of floating up above. I guess and, I'll move uh, my leg then. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it tried. It, it tried to get the surprise on you, but it, it actually it actually rolled a twenty total, but you rolled higher. Um, and uh, I would like everyone to roll for initiative. Oh. Oof. Huzzah! Can I even fight in? Non- uh, you're about to find form? out. Okay. You're about Marezi to find rolls out. a natural <laughs> one. Marezi is a run. Plus your initiative modifier. Can't really fail uh, yes. initiative, which would be amazing. I roll could. a three, a natural three. Yeah, three. I roll okay. an eighteen. Fifteen for ticks. <laughs> okay, uh, Riley, what was that? Eighteen for mm. Thora. Uh, Penton has a ten. Penton has a ten. So. Fifteen for ticks. And ticks has a fifteen, and Marizzi and Osokai. Also rolled a one, so that makes it a four. Okay, so Osokai and Marezi are uh, down down in the dumps there. So, <laughs> Athora, you are, are just kind of marveling at all of this. I mean, you know, just a few days ago, you were just in a normal adventuring party with your wizard friend and your thief friend. By the way, Norfear is Hi. with y'all. <laughs> uh, he's just, he's, I mean, he, he wasn't going to leave just right, and he certainly wasn't going to abandon you Aww. right now. Uh, he may go his separate ways in a little bit, but he, he wasn't going to abandon you. Uh, he's the one who saved you. Uh, but uh, Thor has got a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is definitely it is definitely platonic. Uh, but uh, you see this weird. Just imagine like a, a classic demon, but with a big bulbous head, uh, a gross looking thing, and it is is reaching out and trying to like tear off Osokai's leg. What would you like to do? Uh, cut off what its arm that's trying to reach for his leg. Okay. Uh, so this is your first time to move uh-huh. in the astral plane. How are you going to move in the astral plane? This thing is floating in the air. It has wings, but it's not like beating them like you would in the uh, the material plane. Uh, it's floating in the air. How would you like Can to I get swim? up to it? Would a swim roll work? Uh, you absolutely uh, can try that. Uh, you, you've <laughs> never really tried to do anything in the astral plane as far as movement, so... And no one's ever explained anything to you, so it's up to you as to how you're. Sure, going to try let's to try and swim because that's the most logical to me. Okay. All right. That's a sixteen. A sixteen. Okay. So you, what you find is that you push yourself forward, and really, what it is, it's actually the movement of you pushing off the deck. Uh, you were standing on the deck just fine, but suddenly you're just kind of floating through the air, and you kind of make a swimming motion. You are incredibly <laughs> ungraceful. Uh, but your but your strike does hit. It actually still hits because you have a big old sword and it wasn't far away. Uh, so roll for damage. Uh, that's a 13. 13. Uh, and it screeches out. You slash into its arm. It recoils. Your, your sword bites deeply into its arm. 
uh, it looks down at you and goes, I will feast upon your fears. And, you should have another uh, attack, too. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Sorry. My, my bad. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, fell off the desk. That is... A desk roll is only valid if it's a <laughs> roll you like. Uh, <laughs> that is a 16. A 16. Okay. okay. Uh, that will hit. And that's an 11 points of damage. 11. So in just those two strikes, you've already done 24 points of damage. So it's swash, swash. Uh, first one catches it on the arm, and the other one catches it on the leg as you're kind of floating a little way away. It's strange. You, you realize that even though you're floating up in the air, you're still keeping pace with the ship. Uh, there's just something about, like, mentally... You're staying with the ship for right now. Uh, you, you, whereas, it, obviously, if you had jumped off a ship in the material plane, the ship would keep going and you would fall down. Um, but that's that's the astral plane for you. Uh, that will bring it to Tix. All right. Uh, Tix will draw Destiny Seeker and will uh, take some running air steps up to the demon and swing away that is not a lovely 13 that will not hit uh it is uh you you push yourself up and you find that there is uh, a mental component to this as well that you weren't expecting and it causes you to slightly overshoot and destiny seeker says that was less than elegant thank you for Um, your constructive criticism (laughs) you are welcome uh and (laughs) benton it is your turn all right. Um, doesn't wait. What? Tix, did you get a second? Tix is a cleric. He doesn't get a second attack. Tix doesn't get second yep. attacks unless I'm firing huh. my crossbow. Oh, then one. All right. Um, could I take a knowledge check to see if I know how to navigate the astral plane, at least in theory? Yeah, All absolutely. Right. Oh, I think a nineteen should do that. Nineteen plus will do nicely. plus numbers. Um, okay. Uh, you have, uh, you know that you have just sort of gently moved into the astral pain during some of your meditations, just very briefly, uh, but you've had very little contact with it, but you know that there are essentially just two ways to move in the astral plane. I think there I know is, one of them. Which one of them is just pushing off, uh, an object, uh, which doesn't work great because in the astral plane, there are very few physical objects. So you can do it once and then you're kind of just floating around. Yeah. The other is just thinking is literally just willing yourself to move and you will move in that direction yeah i think it's basically kind of like i'm going to decide that that's down now and then you just sort of start falling in that direction yep yeah that is absolutely correct all right um that's a good uh memory um but um i'm not going anywhere right now how far away is this thing from us well it's right on top of osaka oh, so I mean, it's not it's too like far away. away right no, no, it was very very close because it was trying to get osaka right um well this is a bizarre creature so i'm going to see what magic missiles do to it okay let's see i get three three yes uh quick question uh, that I kind of forgot. Uh oh. Um, Athora, are either of you any of your weapons magical? No. Okay. Nope. Uh, Good to know. Here. Okay. Well, I can't find it. I'm going to say it t- took half damage, so it takes twelve oh. damage total. Uh, because your your magical your your non magical nature uh just wasn't doing as much to it. Uh, but you did still hit it. Uh, so that's my that's my quick decision. So uh, you are firing your magic missiles. Yeah, and... does uh, ten, 10 whopping points of damage. 10 points of damage, and that is not in any way uh, lessened. It strikes right into it, and it screams. And now it is turning to you, Athora, because you're the one that, that hit it with physical oh, attacks. And um, it is coming uh, towards you, and... You suddenly feel the way you felt when you saw your village, when you found everyone starving. It is making a psionic attack upon you, and I would like you to make a will saving throw. Um, ooh. Um, that's a 14. Oh. Uh, 14 will not save. Uh, fortunately, it has rolled oh. poorly. Uh, so it does, um, 
eight points of psychic damage to you. By the way, you have never taken psychic damage before. It sucks. It uh, does. It, feel, it really feels horrible because you are feeling the emotions of your your village starving and how horrible that is. Um, and it it, it is uh, painful and it shoots right into you. And uh, you all notice that uh, he looks a little less hurt after that happens. Oh, oh boy. Oh goody. Um, and he you and y'all all see like a kind of steam coming off of her and it kind of <laughs> slurping it up. And that will bring it to Osokai, who saw all of this happening. Alrighty. So as a player, this thing heals from psionic damage. As a character, okay. <laughs> I mean <laughs> it's Tuesday, right? Um <laughs> <laughs> I guess as a non-corporeal bot, hmm, I guess I'll just lash out and see what happens. It's Even though I'm not tied to my body, that doesn't change. I guess that doesn't change what Isekai would do, so let's just attack. Mm-hmm. And what are you attacking with? Uh, I'm, uh, I would just use my claws, I guess, since they're an inherent part of me, and I don't think my, okay. I don't think my weapons came with me to the ethereal nature. Uh, well, you have your 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 astral form has all of your weapons and everything on you. Hmm. Uh, it's it's with you. You're just in astral form. I'll still use my claws. They have the okay. higher yeah. attack. Um, all right. So first attack is seventeen. Uh, seventeen will uh, definitely hit. Okay, and that's four damage from the claws. Okay, uh, so that does uh, two points of damage uh, as the uh, non-magical attack uh, hits, but does not do full damage. But y'all are still uh, hurting it, and that will bring it to uh, Marezi. still have a second attack. Oh, oh, sorry, of course you have a second attack now, too. I forget. All right, that's a 20. Definitely hit. Is that a natural 20 or unnatural? That is a natural 20. Nice. All right. Double all that up. Okay. That's... That's a one, so that makes it two, which I guess makes it one. <laughs> uh, so a really good minor hit. Uh, you yeah. Swing, swing! You're, you're, like a, you're like a cat just going... Rawr, 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 yeah. Uh, against it. Uh, it, it just imagine. Y'all, I want you all to imagine this. You know, you you you're not quite sure of this astral form, and you're kind of floating around and rah, 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 just just lashing out wildly, uh, slashing at this creature. And that. Speaking of slashing out wildly, Marezi, what would you like to do? <laughs> uh, I would like to do something very creative. <laughs> Attack it with my halberd. Okay. Uh, and how are you going to get to it? Hmm. I am going to use my halberd as a sort of since we're we're inside of a ship. The, the well, you're, ship right you're now, on right? the you're on the deck of a ship. So you're. Standing. I'm going to use my halberd, which is about five feet long, to kind of just push me in the right direction because I'm kind of like next to the ship. Pole vault. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna like do a pole vault push off. More like rowing, but sure. Okay. Uh, you, uh, it, it definitely moves you forward. Uh, row, it, row, it, row your orc. Row your orc. Yeah, you've, <laughs> you've done canoeing before. He's just like canoeing with the row pushing off at the bottom of the lake. Uh, well, you, you do that and it, it's a combination of, of the astral plane does respond to you pushing off, but also, uh, your mental command, which you don't realize that's what's happening right now, but roll to it. Yes. Uh, that is 18. That hits. All right, all right, all right, all right. It's been so long since I played D&D. Don't know anything anymore. Uh, 13 divided by 2, which is 6 why, in D&D why divided rules. By, why divided by 2? Because it's not magical halberd. But or is it? As you hit, well, the, the, the halberd is not magical, but as, as Penton has correctly said, your arm bad... <laughs> squeezes just gently 
and uh, you almost can see the creature like kind of like scowling at you, like huh, nice try, and then it cuts into its side and it oh, lovely. screeches yeah. uh, as it does full damage of the thirteen. Nice, uh, and, and my second attack. That. It was not expecting that. I'll go for it. Ooh, uh, uh, that's a five. I was so confident about how I hit him real good. I forgot that I actually have to try to hit him. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it was, it's more that you're just uh, you're you're like you're you're you do that amazing hit, but you're still moving slowly, and you're like, oh whoa, <laughs> do, do, and you, do, you go over his head. Do, um, do. And that will actually bring it back to Athora. You are all now. Imagine yourself that the ship is sailing forward, uh, as forward as things can be in the astral plane. You are all above the ship, but you're still moving. Uh, Bubbles is uh, getting a hold of the animals and securing them down for safety. And uh, of course, uh, Rainbow Boy has to keep the ship moving. Uh, he's keeping it moving with his psionic abilities, but he's watching very closely with his weapons at the ready. Uh, and Norfear is. Uh, uh, was trying to work in for a sneak attack, but he still hasn't figured out this whole astral plane thing and isn't really moving so good. <laughs> oh, yay. Um, am I still in immense mental pain? Uh, yeah, it, it really, it hurt really, really bad, but you have, you have recovered. You are not, like, uh, under its thrall or anything. It was just a really pain painful okay. attack. Then I'll try and use my sword again. That's a natural okay. one. Natural one. Uh, then if you could roll the 100-sided uh, dice for oh, me and yay. tell me what percentage you get. That is a 60. A 60? Nothing happens. You just miss. Uh, it sucks. Uh, it's you're, you're still recovering from oh, that yay. thing, but you've got a second attack. Oh, that's better. Uh, that's an 18 to hit. 18 okay. definitely hits. So roll that damage and then uh, by half. That is a seven. So that's half. Seven. Okay. All right. And uh, it's it's looking pretty rough, and that will that will bring it to you, Tix. We'll do um, a nice inflict moderate wounds and run up and lay hands on him, and that is a beautiful sixteen. Uh, that would be a 21. Excellent. And if there's any way that you can make your audio louder, uh, just so you know, I'm, I'm sure it's recording fine, but I'm just, I can't hear you quite as well. All right. That is, oh, uh, rolled a 16 for inflict wounds and plus my mm -hmm. modifiers. That's a 21. And that definitely hits. So I run up and lay hands on him and inflict 18 points of damage. 18 points of damage. So, Tix, please describe to me how you slay this astral creature. Well, as I run up the, what amounts to imaginary stairs, uh, right up to his back, and grab hold of his bat wings, and say prayers as I try and shove my hands with the bat wings through his back into his chest cavity, uh, doing all sorts of nasty necrotic damage in the name of Garl Glittergold. It liquefies nice. his body and dissipates him, sending him back to Huzzah. the hell plane that he deserves. Uh, well, he, he does not go to a hell plane. He is destroyed because he is a native of this uh, plane. Ooh, even better. Uh, and he is uh, absolutely destroyed. And... Um, you you see him just evaporate and scream and little steams come up that you suspect are the swallowed fear of others. And he is gone. And Bubbles uh, comes up to y'all and goes, that was a great job. I've never seen someone so uh, so quickly take out a, a burbalang. Oh. A burbalang. I'll have to write yeah, that one yeah. down. They are, they are pretty nasty creatures. I've also uploaded it on... Uh, uh, Discord, so you can see what that looks like. Uh, oh, and they what also, a friend. They also mentioned earlier that these are one of the creatures that is contesting uh, the corpse of Set. Oh, uh, yeah. And speaking of which, over in the distance, y'all see uh, coming over, not really the horizon, but just coming into view, a massive 
uh, form in the distance, and you can see like like gnats moving around it. There appear to be other ships circling around it, and off to the other side, think about like like an orbiting planet, some enormous creature that might be known as a dreadnought, and you hear a Sweet, cool, a space whale. Fun. And that's where we'll end. Shaving Armor, episode <laughs> 83. Thank you all for playing today. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we want to all say a special thanks to our wonderful listeners who inspired the characters uh, Bubbles and Rainbow Boy. Uh, thank you both. Thank you thank very you Rainbow much. Thank you, Rainbow and Bubbles. And... Uh, you two are absolutely awesome. Uh, to Also to uh, Lalante, did I say it right? Yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, who, who put us in contact and made that all possible. We love all of our listeners. You are all fantastic. And uh, we, we all thank you. Thank you. I agree. Yes, thank you. Thanks, you guys. are awesome. Uh, so you all have a wonderful day, and we will roll with you.